In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Thy nativity, O Christ our God, hath given rise to the light of knowledge in the world. For they that worship the stars did learn therefrom to worship thee, O Son of Justice, and to know that from the east of the highest thou didst come, O Lord, glory to thee. Miladuka ayyuha al-Masihu ilahuna. Qad atla'a nur al-ma'rifati fil alam li anna sajidina lil kawakib bihi ta'allamu min al-kawkab sujuda laka ya shams al-adl. وأن يعرف أنك من مشارق العلوي أتيت يا رب المجد لك. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Our special Bible study. We wanted to take a break today from um, the Epistle of a uh, uh, Philippian uh, Saint Paul Epistle to the Philippians, and we thought like it would be appropriate to um, uh, just look into the uh, the nativity of Christ, what it means for us uh, through the eyes of the icon, but also uh, what how can I live or live this feast today? Not as, uh, not to celebrate it as a historical event, but actually uh, something personal, something spiritual. Um, I thought before we, this is basically what I'm, uh, what I'm going through, what I'm going to uh, go through. It's a presentation I did last year in November at St. Mary's in Baltimore in Hot Valley. Um, I was their speaker for their for their Advent retreat. So. It is, it's not long, but we'll see. I mean, we'll give ourselves like an hour, an hour and a half that we talk about the important things. And if there are things that, you know, we'll have to skip, we skip them. Uh, but the point is to um, get to know more and learn um, why there are certain things. Why do we see in the icon, as I'm going to share now, um, um, why do we see, what is it? What, what is it? Who is this guy here? Uh, who is this guy? You know, who are these people? Uh, what are the other things that we're going to look into? Who's this? Who's this? Why there are two animals and why those two animals? Um, so uh, that's basically we're going to try to look into um, and have, you know, um, at least we we receive this feast or we live this feast coming up in two days, uh, knowing that we know more about it. Not just like, well, we know it's the birth of Christ, but there are so many things around it and nothing in Christianity that just like arbitrary is just put, there's always a meaning. Uh, I'm just gonna go general, uh, in a general way, um, what we see here. Um, uh, of course, this is, uh, this is Jesus Christ, right? Uh, the baby. Uh, we'll talk more if we have time. Like that looks like a, you know, it is it's supposed to be a manger, but it doesn't look like a manger. It looks actually like what, like a tomb. Uh, Christ is uh, um, uh, um, wrapped. wrapped, yes, with linen, but looks like also like a body. You know what I mean? Like somebody who died. Uh, but anyway, this is Jesus. We'll get a chance if we can talk about this. Um, this is Jesus. This is the Virgin Mary. Uh, this is the oaks and the uh, uh, um, uh, the, the well. Let's talk the, the two animals. We'll talk about them in a second. Why? Um, of course, this is the star that we see here on top. Uh, those are the angels. Uh, this angel is telling, as we can see here, the shepherds. Right uh, here's the sheep, and then those represent the magi, kings. the kings. Right, you'll see them, um, uh, and of course, I mean every. I mean, every icon, it's not like we only have one icon, you know, for the nativity. It's going to like, I mean, just Google nativity of Christ icon, you probably see like 200 kinds. But at the end, they all have the same essence, right? There's always a Christ, the Virgin Mary, at least there's the star, the angels and the shepherd and the magi. And then some other things here and there um, might be added. So what we see here in the bottom of this uh, here it's uh see how do i know it's christ actually because his halo is the only one who has those um like uh lines in them see here and here um and it's uh it's, it's basically in hebrew on uh, on like uh i am like uh, uh the i am right when moses uh asked god like if my people tell me who you are what's your name he says well i am or on um so that's how we know christ so here it seems just like a nice scene that somebody's like servant or someone 
um, taking care of Christ, bathing him. The same way whenever there is a birth in our families, the mother comes in or the, the mother-in-law or, you know, to help with, uh, you know, taking care of the baby. So here we see somehow like Jesus basically taking a bath or something. And those two servants are helping with that. And on this side, we see one with a halo and one without a halo. So the one with the halo and sitting like this, you know, his hand is on his cheeks. Um, this is Joseph. This is Joseph, the 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 um, uh, fiance, or Saint Mary's, uh, the Virgin's fiance, um, right? And this guy, uh, who does not have a halo, but also like wearing this darker, kind of like, yeah, like a dark, scary, if I can say, uh, outfit, uh, garment. Uh, this we don't hear about anything like this. Uh, in the gospel, right? There's a man with a cane, with a cane or something. But what do we know about what happened to Joseph when he heard about Christ, uh, the Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, uh, is going to have a child? What do we remember from the he gospel? Doubted. He doubted her. Right, he doubted like he had that as a human being, of course. So in the icon, when you see Saint Joseph like this, this guy who kind of like on the side, kind of like either hand like this or either. Like you can tell, he's not a very happy person here, right? He has evil thoughts, demons. Right. Yeah, but also, I mean, it's not easy, right? It's not easy to just like all of a sudden, like, hey, I'm pregnant and it's the Holy Spirit. Well, of course, like, they, I mean, it's natural, right? But of course, he did not, he believed in everything, right? But whenever you see this kind of guy, like, like no colors, right? It's not like he's wearing green and all blue, blue or red or white, like these kind of darker colors he represents the the devil he represents the devil who's coming to like hey like the bad conscious or like the bad thoughts you know those thoughts that he had like oh is she really then pregnant by you know by um uh, you know the holy spirit is it she did she cheat on me or you know did she commit adultery so those thoughts basically kind of the, the devil trying to uh feed into uh joseph's head so that's why whenever you see this this kind of a figure it's usually it means the the uh, the, the devil okay um anything else we'll, we'll talk more about some interesting things about the icon in general um i use different icons just uh because to show what i really wanted to tell you but also some of them i had to look um like a different ones because i needed the resolution because i needed to focus on a specific part so i had to enlarge it uh and sometimes you know if it's a weak um uh what do you call it like the resolution is low then you won't be able to see the thing so you might have like not exactly the same icon in all the slides but the point is like i said in the beginning they all have those general themes right the general figures the angels the star the um, uh, you know the, the shepherds the magi right and other you know ones you might not see this scene even this scene sometimes is not depicted, but okay. Uh, any questions first? Or, yeah, but I, do have one. Um, I think this, I mean, as many times I've looked at the icon of the nativity and I know this is Christ in there, mm -hmm. but also I just now noticed that it also has the letter ICX. -E. Yes. Is that common in all of them? Yes. So yes and no, it depends. Uh -huh. uh, usually, you might not have them. In this case, you do have the ICXC, right? Those Isus Christos. Isus Christos, which Jesus Christ. Jesus, ICXC. Sometimes you won't see them. But what you always see in the icon of Christ or in the figure of Christ, the halo, always have these. Right, okay. But these might not be present. For whatever reason, like no space or, but you can never have Christ with a halo just like that. Got it. Always there is, you know, this. And then here in the Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, um, there are also, these things might not be he here, which basically it says in Greek, there's an MR, uh, uh, MR, and like it's a F, it's a F. So it's like a, a it's a th in Greek. So it's like literally an O with a line inside of the the th, um, and then a Y if I'm not mistaken. But basically, it says 
Meter to say you, the mother of God. Meter to say you. Sometimes it, it's there, sometimes it's not. How do we know without these words, Virgin Mary? You always, here it's not depicted very well. Always, always on the Virgin Mary to know where the Virgin Mary in the picture, in the icon of which she's depicted, she would always have three stars on her. One on her forehead, one on her right shoulder, and one on her left shoulder. Three stars. And they, in the Orthodox, or in the Christian world, of course, that became after the Orthodox world, it represents her virginity before giving birth, during giving birth, and after giving birth, that she is all the time, she is um, a virgin. Uh, no other female saint, no other male saint will have that depiction of three stars, one on the forehead and one of each of the shoulders. Uh, again, here it doesn't show very well. Uh, let me see. We can... Uh, yeah, but I can give you here. It's, it's just not something... I just want to make sure that icon of the Virgin Mary. So look at this one. This 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 is I can see some yeah here and here and here. Let me see why don't they really have a better pictures. Look at this one. See those stars on her head? One here, one here, and one here. Uh, all the all the icons of the Theotokos will have those uh, basically stars. Um, anyway, but that's one way to to recognize who she is in the picture and or in the icon. Um, so I will start um, in the uh, like talking about in general, and then you'll have the slide and, and some info on the screen. So um, what I'm going to talk about is Christ birth as historical and divine mystical event. So it is not just a historical event. I mean, I'll use the papers like this here. Uh, it's not just a historical event, but it's also a mystical, I mean, a divine mystical uh, event. I'm going to talk about um, the people and the supernatural events involved in his birth. Um, like we have, like, why were they magi? Why did we need like where? Why weren't they the Pharisees? Why weren't they? I don't know some other kind of people or type of work that they do. Like why astronomer, astrologers? Uh, why shepherds that the uh, uh, that the angels appeared to? Why couldn't they be blacksmith? You know, or any of this uh, things. Um, if we have time, also we will talk about well, and of course we'll we'll talk about what does it mean for us today, right? Because we always say we never live just the, or we never celebrate just the historical event or the historical celebration. What is it for us now? What it means for us now, especially if you actually keep, you know, uh, if you notice and, and keep, an, keep an ear for this, all the hymns that we always sing in major feasts and Nativity and Pascha and Theophany, we always, the hymns never talk about, oh, 2000 years ago, this, it would actually say today he's born, today he's baptized, today he's resurrected from the death. From the dead, you know, so stuff like this. That, uh, and if we have time, there are things that I spoke about in the, uh, uh, in my talk in in uh, Baltimore, uh, the various names associated with Christ before and after his birth. There are different names he was called differently before he was incarnated, before he came to us as a human being. He never had the name. Well, he was not known as Jesus Christ. He was known as the Word of God, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity. We'll discuss this if we have time and, and if you want to spend more time on this. And then uh, 
uh, why uh, actually why uh, it is like it was purposefully the second person of the Trinity who took flesh. Why, you know, as we know, there are three persons in one God, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why the Son who is the one who became uh, the, the, uh, who became incarnated, who took flesh? Why couldn't it be the Father? Why couldn't it be the Holy Spirit? Right? One of these three persons of the uh, of the Trinity. So those are the things that uh, we'll try, you know, to to uh, um, you know cover the best we can and uh, as short as we can. Um, uh, but of course, mainly, what is it for us now today? Um, so, as we know, the birth of our Lord is both a historical event, right, uh, but also a divine mystical event. Um, we know that it is a historical event. Many wrote about it, you know, Christians and non-Christians, agnostics, um, uh, Jewish historians. They spoke about Jesus Christ, at least not even if they could, if they did not believe in him, like uh, the Jewish uh, uh, writers. But at least they acknowledged that there was a guy who was born in Bethlehem with the name Jesus Christ. Who, who claimed that he's the Messiah and all of this. So historically, we know that um, the birth of Christ took place uh, when Caesar Augustus was emperor of Rome and Herod was ruler of Judea. Um, only, well, three out of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, speak about and wrote about the nativity of our Lord um, and, uh, uh, um, and insisted on emphasizing the historical aspect uh, of the birth, uh, Christ um, uh, was not a uh, an, an imaginative figure from a story, but his existence as a full human being on Earth is a historical uh, uh, event. Okay, so so it wasn't like a, like a a, a fable. What's a fable? It's a, a a myth or just like a somebody somebody who's just like oh yeah you know i like that kind of story let me pretend and, and make up this kind of story but it's very important to know that in addition to christ's birth as a historical event it is also a mystery right uh what kind of a mystery the son of man christ born of the virgin although he was born as a baby but he existed before all ages as a full God, as we believe and as we claim, actually, in the creed, right? So Jesus Christ, the baby who was born, was, was not like all of a sudden he became to be this, a baby, or he now he's created. That's why we never use the word created for Jesus Christ, that he was not created, because if he's created, then, then it means like he's not fully divine as we claim and as we believe, right? Which means then, what's the difference between him or any um, any other prophet? So, so uh, it is a mystery that this this baby who was born of a virgin, as also we believe, existed before all the ages as a full God, as the Word, uh, as the Word, and always the name for Christ before he was uh, incarnated. Word of God, we say in Arabic, Kalimat Allah, the Word of God, and we say what it means. Why? Why couldn't be the I don't know the, the like why could why is the word why using the word word of God we'll get to know we'll we'll talk about this, um, uh, okay, so so it is a mystery how the divine nature, okay, it is a mystery how the divine nature unites with the human nature in the person of the Word the second person of the Trinity, as we declare in the Creed. Begotten before all ages, right? Right? I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, begotten before begotten before all the ages, right? Light of life, very God. So So Somehow he existed before. So whoever this baby is born, and then, uh, you know, this baby is born from the Virgin Mary, that it was not just human. He was a human, but also fully divine too. And it's a mystery. We'll talk about it in a second. We accept these mysteries um, as they're given to us. 
about we don't believe that he was at some point not existed and somehow he's a baby and now oh well this is jesus christ he just came to world 2000 years ago yes he came to the world 2000 years ago as a baby as a person as a full human like us but he we believe that he existed before that in the, not as a human without the human body um so in christ uh we believe that there are two births if i can say one before all the ages from the father beyond cause and time right that's why we say maulud ghayr makhluq right begotten of the father before all world light of light uh, very god of very god begotten not made right we use the word begotten um begotten not made uh that again that's how what we believe that's what we learned from saint john that's what from saint john the fourth evangelist uh but also that and also that's what we learned from saint paul in his letters um and of course from the church fathers after the ecumenical councils you know the first ecumenical council the first uh, it, had, it took place in 325 because they were priests. One of them, the, the head priest was named, uh, the, the, the guy who led all of this, this heresy, his name is Arius. Um, Arius, who believed, started teaching that Christ at some point was not exist, like was not existing. Um, like somehow there was time in, in this world uh, that uh, just Christ never existed. And somehow God, the Father, after a while, after he created things, whatever it is, oh, let me create a son to me. And it was a big problem in the church. It took a few years to uh, defend uh, or to, to uh, debunk. Is that the word debunk? Like the, to, um, um, to basically prove, like, not accept that. Not accept that. So in Christ, we believe that there are two births. One before all the ages from the Father beyond cause and time. How? We don't know. And the other birth from the Virgin Theotokos beyond rules and laws of conception, right? Because he was conceived, as we believe and we hear from the Gospel of Matthew, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit and not by seed. In one of the hymns chanted in Christmas, we say that Christ, uh, it's beautiful, you'll hear it on Christmas Day, that Christ is born before all time from a virginal father. Virginal father in what way? That there's no God the mother. Right? There's God the Father. He doesn't have a wife. And in time, so outside of time, he's, he has a father without a mother. And in time on earth as a human being, he is from a virginal mother. He does not have a father. Did you get it? So, so do, do you, do, I'll repeat it. We believe, like we say in one of the hymns, it will state what? That God, Christ, before all times, before his creation, uh, or before he became human and before all creation was created as we see it that he came from a father he has a father god the father but he doesn't have god the mother right i never heard that so as if like the, the god the father as if like there's a virginal father who brought him without a the need of a, a woman or a woman goddess right um and in time when he was born as a human that he's on earth, uh, he was born from a virginal mother, a mother who did not know a man, right? Uh, as we as we say. So uh, we accept this truth, although both births are incomprehensible, right? Uh, both truth, uh, both birth, kind of not normal, right? One from a woman, how come a woman, or how can a woman just, you know, uh, um, you know, gives birth right without a man and how come there is like this god you know second three persons and all of this in one god all of these like it's a mystery right we say it's a mystery uh, like we don't know all everything about it but that's how what we were given um in this mystery that was revealed to us through the scriptures the prophets and the holy men and women saints through history Okay, any questions about on this? Any complaints? Any comments? Any refutes like, no, I cannot believe in this. No, God forbid. But, so that's what we believe. Uh, oops, what happened? Did it freeze? I hope not. No, you're good. You know, like just uh, somehow.
Okay, now, mm -hmm. it, it's, um, I did not want it. Okay, now I'm going to shift to the people, like the people involved in in uh, in, in the in, in, in Christ's birth, right? Uh, so we'll talk about the shepherds, we'll talk about the magi, we'll talk about the star, and we'll talk about the, those two animals that I've told you about, at least those. Okay, so... Uh, um, um, we see in the in the icon like everybody was participating in the birth. In what way? You have the farmer, the the shepherds, the illiterate people. You have the magi, uh, who are uh, the educated ones, but also the the Gentiles were not Jews. The the shepherds most likely they were Jews. We see animals. We see nature is involved. Everybody's involved. Okay, we see the angels. Uh, uh, the angels who are bodiless, right? Even the bodiless powers, the bodiless uh, uh, angels, we are also involved. So everything kind of like all kinds of aspects of life, uh, you know, it was involved in the birth of, of Christ, right? So shepherds, right? Uh, we do, we always hear about the shepherds, right? So first, um, as we read in the story of the nativity, uh, and angels of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and declared the birth of the savior of the world, right? Um, it was not arbitrary that the angels appeared to the shepherds. Why didn't they appear to blacksmith? Why didn't they appear to farmers? Why didn't they appear to uh, to do to to the Pharisees? Why you know why shepherds? Uh, the church believes that uh, uh, there are four reasons, at least that we know of, or at least I know of that I was. Four reasons why um, we uh, we believe that, or it was on purpose that the angels appeared to to uh, uh, to shepherds and not anything and not any kind of people, other people. So shepherds first are known for uh, their uh, solitude, stillness, quietness, and watchfulness. So they're known. Shepherds are known for their solitude, stillness, and quietness. Al Arabi. معروفين هن الرعاة للعزلة سكون والهدوء واليقظة right العزلة uh, Christ kind of in a way was by himself stillness سكون you know being like calm and all of this quietness same thing uh, yes he had a couple times Christ uh, flip tables and all of this but like in general uh, that he was a quiet person and watchfulness always be right he didn't fall he didn't commit any sins and all of this um, so, so that's one second reason. Uh, most of the patriarchs of the Old Testament were shepherds. Like whom? Who was the first kind of patriarch of all, father of all nations? As we learned, this. Abraham. Bravo, Abraham. Right, Abraham was the shepherd. You know that's what they relied on. His son Isaac. That's what they relied on. You know Jacob. They all relied. You know, on on farm. I mean, on being shepherds, and they have uh, crops and all of this. So most of the patriarchs of the Old Testament were shepherds. It was natural that shepherds are the first one to receive the good news, right? Um, God, who did he, who did he appear to first? Who was the first one he appeared to? Yeah, maybe you just said Moses. Right? No, no, before, before, way before. Abraham, what you said. Adam and Eve. Well, after like, yes, Adam and Eve, of course, but uh, at least that was involving a creation. But okay. after the first encounter with the people after the fall, to Abraham, like, bring, and... exactly Abraham, right? To bring Bilia, them, back, many. right? But but at least the first one it was Abraham. So do you see the connection? Like God after the fall wanted to connect with the people. Who was the first one he connected with? Uh, connected with he connected with a shepherd with Abraham. So it makes sense also, makes sense when Christ came in the flesh, his first attempt to, of communication is with whom is with the shepherd too, okay? Um, the third reason is very spiritual. The incarnated son and word of God is the true shepherd of all his creation, right? Who we, who we are, we are the lambs following him, you know? And he's like, hey, okay? And um, lastly, the fourth reason, at least, that I was you know, able to collect, um, is shepherds are the most simple-hearted and likely illiterate, but willing to accept the word of God. 
you know what I mean? Like just good, well, good hearted, usually simple hearted, as it says here, right? That it's not like because they know a couple of words, they're going to be like, uh, excuse me, that's what not I think, you know, and they kind of be smart, a dot dot, if we forgive me, you know, you know, saying this, but like, you know, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, you know, we know better or like, just like goodwill, you know, simply, simple hearted, probably they can, or not probably, definitely they don't know how to write their own names or recognize their names or to not anything. So those are the four four reasons that we, you know, believe, uh, um, you know, that he appeared to shepherds, the angels appeared to shepherds, not just random other ones. Um, okay. Uh, there's a note here in peace, but we, you know. Uh, now, why magi? Why the magi? That's the best I can from, you know, with, you know, the resolution. Um, in addition to the shepherds, the magi or wise men from the east were one of the first people to worship the newborn Christ, right? God the Son was revealed to them uh, God the Son was revealed to them, um, and not the Pharisees and scribes. That's another one. Why those magis were those Gentiles, right? Those you know people who they're not Jews, right? Uh, but why to them, um, uh, and not to Pharisees and scribes? So we know the magi were astronomers. Uh, they come from the from uh, uh, from Persia. Um, um, and they're astronomers. That's what they did. They, there was basically their faith and their uh, they did, they did that. basically they worshipped stuff like this, looking into stars, thinking like everything is related to stars and planets and all of that. So they were astronomers who observed the stars in the sky and their movement. Okay, uh, God's plan, and the reason is because God's plan not to uh, um, uh, uh, only uh, appear to Jews, but it's to everyone, to all his creation, right? Um, uh, to all who wholeheartedly believe in him and the ones who are seeking the maker of this universe, right? At the end, God, yes, it's now on them to accept or not, but God has created all of them. So not just because I'm a Christian, God is going to love me more than some atheists. That's sometimes like very hard to believe. Like, what? But it's actually, that's what it is. God loves everyone because he created everyone. Uh, it's now my job to accept him back. But he's, he still cannot, because of my failure of accepting him or anybody's that, you know, somehow he's going to love them less or not love them. Um, but uh, um, so God's plan, not it's not only to reveal himself to the Jews, but with, uh, to, with all his creation, to all who wholeheartedly believe in him, and the ones who are seeking the maker of this universe. I do want to go back to the icon. It's it's interesting. They all have that the same. They might be dressed differently, but you always have three magis, right? Although they probably, you know, it's not like, especially if they're kings or they have like a high class or high position in their government, in their countries, most likely they, they had other people driving, I mean, driving, uh, traveling with them servants their wives their whatever all of this but what's interesting you always see three and you're always something like in common of all the uh, the nativity icons there are three different like always there's a very old man or a much older man a kind of younger man and then a younger man like a like a, a young adult and it probably in his 20s 40s or so and then 60s or so okay there's always like it means all everybody right um to represent all gentiles not just like any specific of gentiles not any specific you know age range god came for everyone that's why if you look at any nativity any professional iconographer uh will not depict those three to look the same it will he will depict he or she the iconographer will depict the three magis as a very young man an older man and a older man like a senior citizen you know, young adult, and then like a young adult in thirties or forties, and a young adult in the twenties or you know, uh, late teens. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Comments. So they were not kings. So they can be. They can be like. I mean, we say the three kings, the three magis. They've been. We don't know much. Well, now weren't they scientists? So they were astronomers. 
everybody agrees. Well, th that was back in the time. Like, like not like now astronomers were like, ooh, let me give, you know, those like, let me go read your palm and like with the light. It's just, they were people who studied. Um, uh, I mean, that was based, they, they were just definitely Stars astronomers. and stuff like that. Everybody, yes, everybody agreed, uh, agrees that they're astronomers who basically kept an eye, were studying the universe, the movements of planets and movement of, of stars and all of this. And that's why um, we, we, you know, we, you know, that's why the star was used, not something else. Uh, as I'll talk about it in a second. But so, and to be astronomers, you have to be like, they're like smart, intelligent people who were, you know, uh, what did you call them, Nicolette? I think she said scientists. Scientists, yes, yes. So anyway, to, to learn about these things, you must be like a scientist. That, that's a good word. But like they were more in, in particular, they were astronomers, uh, people who, uh, you know, followed, you know, stars and planets and studied them. And somehow that's, they wanted to see if there's anything beyond, like, like there's some kind of a power out there. Um, and wanted to like study it and get to know it and see if it exists or how can they you know get it and all of this. Uh, third, the star which the Magi followed to Bethlehem was not an ordinary uh, star. It wasn't just like now we look it's like oh yeah it's just a it's a it's a star that somehow like it's lit or it's like it has a uh, uh, like a stronger light than others. This one was like a very obvious. Uh, um, uh, a very obvious, um, like a big star, but um, um, Saint John Chrysostom, you know, our one of our major major saints, uh, actually writes in one of his writing about the nativity that it was an angel of the Lord who guided them. And you know, angels don't have bodies, right? We call them the bodiless powers. That they're spirits in a way. They're not. They don't have bodies like us. But we depict them. We when we you know look at the doors of the church to go in the altar uh, at Saint George. At the doors we have two um, the, the two uh, um, uh, angels, but we depict them like as soldiers, and they have bodies, and they have legs and hands, and holding whatever. A funny one at St. George, he's holding flowers, whatever, he's bringing flowers to the Virgin Mary. Usually you might see them depicted, you know, holding a sword or something, but at the end of the day, that's not their nature. You know, they appear to us, you know, they might have appeared to us as, you know, whenever they wanted to reveal a message as a human beings to help us see them, understand them, and, and kind of accept them, but they can be anything, or they can turn to anything. Um, that's why St. John Chrysostom writes, it was just an angel that looked like a strong, big star. But it's not just like a, a planet. It's not like, oh, yeah, this star, they just kind of like took it, you know, out of the universe and started moving it around. Uh, um, so like, oh, yeah, you know what, let's take Mercury or some star or some planet and like, you know, do this. It's just like most, most likely it was a um, an angel. Right, uh, and how do we know it was not an, an ordinary star? Um, the star moved. We know from scriptures and from writings that the star moved, uh, and when uh, moved when the magi moved, and when they stopped, it too stopped. Somehow, like it was waiting. It you know just it was only for the magi. Um, the 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 it was the star was moving much lower than the other stars. And when it reached the birthplace of Christ, it came low. How do we know these things? Well, we know them from you know from scriptures and from writing of uh, church fathers right after the uh, you know uh, Christ's ascension. And it says when it came uh, when it reached to the birthplace of Christ, it came low. Uh, or else, how would the Magi be able to find the baby Jesus? Right. How would they be able to find him if he just like stayed, you know, still up? Somehow it came, light came down low enough to recognize the exact place where Christ was, uh, um, uh, it was, you know, where Christ was born, right? One of the saints in the church, his name is Nicodemus, 
He says the star was so bright that it exceeded the 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 star the brightness of the other stars. You know, it was just overwhelmingly you know bigger than any other star. Um, uh, it was moving, uh, yeah, and it was moving. It's interesting from east to west. Although usually, if you see, you know, if you follow the uh, you know stars and stuff. Usually, when you see them, you know the way they're positioned with the Earth. They go; they usually go from east, from west to east. They go this way, but with this one is different. Where it says that the star was moving from east to west, uh, to just just abnormal way of uh, um, uh, uh, abnormal way, and then uh, it says in the scriptures that it went from where to where. It went down south. From a Jerusalem to Bethlehem, they made their ways the Magi to Jerusalem and then down to Bethlehem. So, what kind of a star is going to move east to west, which is not normal, and then north to to south? It had it. It must have been definitely not an ordinary star that that just like happened. You know, it was more of like a an angel who was uh, leading this, uh, right? So, um, uh, so. It's, and it's actually, it's also, as St. John Chrysostom tells us, that the star was also uh, uh, seen in daylight, uh, right? Usually during daylight, you see the sun, that's it. Maybe at some point in the early morning or like when when night starts, you might see other stars showing. But in general, during the day, there's no way you can see any other star but the sun. But this one is, other than the sun, there was the star that people still can see. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, have you seen uh, Home Alone? Home Alone Two. Do you remember this movie? Anybody familiar with it? The guy who his uh, family. I've watched them. What is it? I've seen them. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like so. So in in um, Home Alone Two, um, in Home Alone Two, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Kevin. Kevin uh, gets on a different plane. Uh, with his parents and his parents were going to Florida because he was back uh, he was he was left behind doing it, trying to find batteries for his recorder voice recorder he gets into a different plane so he goes to New York and he's by himself in New York um, and trying to like find his parents and all of this but he meets this lady the pigeon lady I don't know if you know this uh, scene she's a homeless pigeon lady who would feed the pigeons and the pigeons are always around her and they became friends and uh, it was actually yeah, she was in the park, yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, that's that's her, that's when he gets to meet her, and then she helps him at the end. And uh, you know, and she was so glad that somebody talked to her after many years, no one talked to her. But it's, it's interesting because every usually Christmas time, uh, the kiddos here at home they'd like to watch it. And it hit me actually when it says, um, he's telling her, I read it down, he's telling her that you know, he made a lot of mistakes, he feels you know, he feels. Um, uh, like you know, he he upset his family, and then he feels bad what he did with his brother and all of this, right? Uh, but she told him, and she's like beautiful. She said, "You must think." She's telling him like you can't just keep always thinking about you know, oh, um, you know how, uh, you know how shameful I did this and all of this. Like always look at the bright side. It says she said, "You must think of the most important thing that you can do for others, and go and do it. Just call us." you know, move on, you know, and it says, she says, just follow the star in your heart, in your own heart, follow the star, follow who, follow Christ, follow Jesus, and it's, I feel like that's what at least she meant, maybe Hollywood did not want, but I liked how she said, follow the, um, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, follow the, uh, um, the stars, like the, um, I like that coat that she's okay. So, um, so that was about you know the magi, the the the, the shepherd, the magi, and the star. And the next one I want to say, uh, why the ox and the donkey? So, Father, hey, tell me, is it is that one me? question before we move to the ox and the donkey? Sure. Uh. 
does the church uh, like uh, I don't know recognize when does the Magi start traveling to the to the west? Oh, I see. Uh, well, it seems that they make it because we know that um, you know uh, uh, when they arrived, they went first to Jerusalem to talk to Herod, right? That to tell him like we're here, we're looking for the king, and we saw you know according to our legends and all of this, that there was a king that would be born. And then by the time they made it to Bethlehem, Jesus was not just a newborn. It seems maybe between two and three years, like between oh, the days. So, wow. Yes, because it took a long time and for them to come all the way from Persia and all of this. Uh, because what, what what did Herod do when he... When he ordered he, for all the kids to be killed. Two what? year olds and under. The two year three years, olds. Three years two. and under. Two years and so in that life's like a timeline, maybe it took them like a couple of years to travel. As we know, I mean, it took right. It wasn't like oh, let's take the train or let's take the uh, uh, the private jet or any of this, right? So they were on their horses. You know, God only knows what the what the what the weather and all of this. But at least two years, probably that that's how um, it took them to uh, to arrive or some you know around that time. Um, um beautiful question why the ox in the jungle? what is it some said something uh one more question on that I want to yeah. on. how yeah. do they know to bring gifts with them because each one was carrying a gift so yeah how... that's we don't know i don't i don't know if there's an like how do they know but we know they offered these type of these types of uh, of gifts right what did they offer they offered incense right? And they offered myrrh and they offered gold. I mean, I assume, I never, I don't know, maybe I, I can look maybe more into it. And um, But those probably common gifts, if I can stay to say, or at least not all, but at least some, you know, can be like, you know, from king to another king, you know, you, usually they gift each other, like they bring each other gold, Um it's interesting that all three together, not just one, uh, the gold and the, you know, and myrrh, um, um, I mean, incense and myrrh, usually, to my knowledge, that they exchange usually gifts like gold. You know, somebody gets like a, a nice golden sword or some kind of, you know, some kind of a, a necklace, something like, like gold stuff. Um, but I don't know why would I mean we know what it means to us. They were they were healthy and they were wealthy. Uh, uh, yes, yes, for they sure. were from a high class level. Absolutely. And they knew they knew they're coming to the king of kings. Yes, it's uh, interesting. I mean, I mean, we know that but why, why would they choose those three? You know what I mean? Why couldn't it be just then gold? Like I thought or, I thought this is related to the to the uh, uh, same gift that the three ladies took to the tomb of Jesus. You mean uh, no they they only took myrrh. Myrrh and Frankenstein too. Frankenstein but but, it's, but it, yes but they didn't take gold right? Right. So, but we know but we know at the end at least what it means for us those three things that the gold that he is what He's a king, like a, a king, you represent king. Why incense? Do you know? To worship. Uh, more. More. Like so so his priesthood, his it was, it was, it was very well known at that time. What at that it? time, at that time, at that period, even kings exchanged myrrh and frankincense in between, and they were proud of their uh, this is my thing. This is my special collection. This is my... it. Might be. It might be. I don't know honestly. I can definitely, but I appreciate it to let me know this. If that's the type of gifts they use, how they use. So the three, th uh, the 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 the, uh, the incense, uh, the Frankenstein is for what to say that he is the high priest. He's the priest of priests. He's the spiritual leader. Uh, so not only a king, but also a spiritual leader. And then, of course, the myrrh is for what? At least what it represents for us now. His burial. His burial, like Zabia also was mentioning, that what that's what the ointment, the mayor bearing woman took with that, right? So, so we know that that's what they offered. Again, also a, a, a 
according to the scripture. So it might be like Jamel was saying, that it's that's also part of a gift that usually a king might give other king uh, is basically the incense and the Frankenstein and stuff. So why ox and donkey, not like a pigeon? You know, here, uh, that's the ox and that's the donkey. Why couldn't it be a horse? Why couldn't it be whatever it is? Why those two? Because it's to fulfill... The Jews and the Gentiles. Jews and Gentiles, sure, sure. Oxes, donkeys, wherever. Anyway, so Jews and Gentiles. But also look at the scriptures, what it says in Isaiah 1, 3, in the beginning of Isaiah. The ox knows his owner and the teeth, you know, the ass is his master's crib, right? But Israel has not known me and my people have not understood. So he's at the point to say, well, here's the fulfilled prophecy of Isaiah that when the Messiah comes, the ox knows his owner, like knows who's in charge, and the donkey, the ass knows his master crib, but Israel, all the other, all the humans, does not, you know, do not know who I am, right? Right. So, so uh, the ox knows his owner, and the ass master's crib, and that's why those animals are depicted there. Uh, to say that, look, Isaiah said that, um, and look, even the animals, and we like what we say, uh, which, which, by the way, a lot of times we might think, you know, some stories or like some songs might say Christ was born in a stable, like a horse stable. No, it was a cave. I believe it was a cave that from the beginning, this church always talked about a cave for whatever, whenever those Christmas uh, carols came out and stuff, that it, some of them might say he's in a stable, like he was born in a stable, or such. it is a cave. And those animals we say here that they recognized him and they were animals, but also to keep him uh, warm, that they were, um, uh, you know, they were uh, um, uh, breathing, like blowing air, just so like he can, they can uh, uh, warm him. There's no heat or, you know. Anyway, so at the birth of Christ, all creation, the angels, the shepherds, the star, the magi, the animals, exalted God, right? Uh, their maker. Creation is bearing witness. All creation is bearing witness uh, that Jesus, the baby, is the word of God who participated in created in creating a creation. Um, so here, everybody was involved, right? Um, I can. I think it's uh, only eight. We can do that. We can talk about uh, another part, which is uh, the names which the second person of the Trinity is known and called by. You know, the name, the names, uh, what is this person, the second person of the Trinity, who's we know when he was incarnated, became man as Jesus Christ. What are the names that he was called before he was Jesus Christ, before he became uh, a man? Um, okay, so before the incarnation, before the incarnation, the second person of the Trinity is called the Son and Word of God. Every time in the scriptures or the the, um, uh, the saints talked about Christ before he became a human, before he became man, he was always referred to the Son and the Word of God. What do we know about the, the Gospel of John? How does it start? Do you remember the first few words of uh, the Gospel of John? In the beginning. In the beginning. The word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Right. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. So it was always referring to the second person of the Trinity as Ibn Ibn Allah or Kalimatullah, as we say in Arabic. Kalimatullah, right? Um, actually, it's interesting, you know, in the Divine Liturgy, after we sing, Save us, O Son of God, who art risen from the dead, three times, right? We sing to the Alleluia. We, we go glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and Word of God, who art immortal. Okay, so it's like it's a it's a title of of Christ before he became human. Um, so uh, the Son and Word of God, uh, the Son, the name Son indicated that he was begotten of the Father. He comes from God. We use the word begotten, not created. Al Maulud min al Ab al Makhluk. Right? We say Maulud. Uh, but in English, we say begotten to explain that he was not created. So the name son indicates that he was begotten of the father. He comes from God. The name word of God, word here, is used to indicate the unity be between both of them 
and how this relationship is manifested. The second person of the Trinity is called Word, okay, because he is related to the Father in the way in which a person's word is related to his mind. So how do I know, how can I develop, uh, uh, how do I get to know Nancy or, or Zabia or Sammy or Nicolette, those are now on my, my screen because I have the full screen shared. Um, how do I get to know who they are? By the things that they say, how they talk, right? It's very important, like the way, okay, if somebody always talks like bad words, like, well, I can tell, bad person, or like, so at least your words, your words uh, describes who you are. So the son of God, the son, second person of the Trinity that we called him, the word of God, Kalimatullah, right? Um, uh, the word proclaims the thoughts of the mind, Thus, the word, kalime, shows and reveals the Father to us. So when Christ speaks, that he's the word. So whatever he says, as if he's showing us in the end who the Father is, who that, like, who is he, who he is representing, right? Um, uh, so, so he is the word of God uh, to show and to reveal the Father to us. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, every time, um, uh, anytime we heard, you know, God spoke to Moses, you know, God spoke to, you know, did this. Uh, God showed this. Wait, give me. It's just, I guess I'm gonna, I didn't drink coffee today. That's the problem. Um, um, anytime we heard in the Old Testament that God interacted with his people, like when he spoke to Abraham, when he spoke to, you know, to the prophets, to Elias, to all of them, um, we believe that was not God the Father, as the church teaches us. It was actually the, the second person of the Trinity, the Word of God. So Christ, before he was incarnated, that he was somehow like without the body, that he is basically speaking and doing God's work. So whenever God appeared and spoke in the Old Testament, we believe, not just, oh, that's Father John who came with us, that's what the church teaches us, as much as like, huh, can we prove this, can we? Some of us, like I said, it's a mystery, but that's what the church teaches us, and we accept it. So we believe that it was the second person of the Trinity, the Word of God, um, but without flesh, of course, while, you know, that's he's the one who's speaking, who's the one who's doing the work, uh, while in the New Testament, the re revelations are of the incarnated Word of God. So after the incarnation in the New Testament, then we see the incarnated, the body, in the human body of the Word of God. Um, there's a metropolitan in uh, Greece, he writes very beautifully. Um, he's, a, he's a theologian, uh, um, Hierotheus, his name. Uh, he says, the fact that Adam heard the footsteps of God in paradise and Moses saw the back of God. Remember those stories that uh, when, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, what did they do? And they tried to hide. What did they hear? Doop, 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 the step, steps are right of God. In Moses uh, says, you know, when Christ, when he asks God, like, show me something of you, just certainly he, he sees the back of God. Um, the, we believe in the church that they heard and saw the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity. They heard and saw what has to happen in the future. So basically, those the steps that that's like they foresaw the the incarnation, but that was the work, and that was that was the work of the second person of the Trinity, not. God the Father, God Himself, like God the the Father, God the Creator of everything. It was all done through His Son, the Word of God, who became after the incarnation, became um, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the incarnated God. Right. So, so after the incarnation, after God is born, the Word now is He is still God, the Word. But now he's called Christ, right? Jesus Christ. And what does Christos mean? Christ means Messiah. Messiah is the anointed one, the one who is anointed. Um, uh, now, which the, the anointed one, that's the name now, Christ, Jesus Christ, which now refers not only to his human nature, but also his divine nature. Uh, so he was, so he who was the Son and Word of God before the incarnate, uh, incarnation. While he re always remains the Son and Word of God after the Incarnation is called Christ. 
In simple words, there was no time when the divine word of God was absent or ceased to exist after his incarnation, becoming a human being while he was on earth, right? So it's not like, well, um, uh, uh, well, why, you know, it, he is the son of God. We, you know, but, uh, he is like this God, but when he became man, he gave up all of this. No, we, that's not what we believe. We believe that even when he's this baby that who's like trying to breastfeed, you know, the baby who's just like, you know, falling, learning how to how to walk and all of this, that he is still somehow that he is still the God who created everything, the God who uh, uh, who who created everything, and the God who has existed before all the ages. Um, okay, actually, it's a heresy, hatta. You know, it's a wrong teaching for us, the Orthodox, to say that the divinity was made flesh or became man. It's not like oh, it became it changed to something. It uh, it changed. You know, it's not that it changed. That it's now uh, what we Orthodox believe that the divinity of the Word of God, uluhiyat kalimatullah, tahadit, was united with his humanity right at the moment he was formed in the Virgin's womb. Yani ilahiyat uluhiyat kalimat Allah, tahadit ma insaniyat. Rabna, right at the moment. What is it? And Nasut Wallahut. Nasut Wallahut. That's what definitely we can use that. That they united. They got united. One one was not was not seized for the other to exist. Or they both existed together at the same time. That's why we say he's a hundred percent. He's a full human and full God. Hundred percent human. Hundred percent uh, God. Um, Saint John of Damascus, Yohanan Dimashqi, says. The second person of the Holy Trinity, the Son and Word of God, who was and is true God, became incarnate. Okay, um, that was not just uh, uh, um, like he is full man and a full God, as we believe. Okay, um, we we can talk. Actually, well, let's not push it. Um, I'll say actually. I'll say it fast. Um, there, there are like a couple, you know, good things. Why uh, is that the Word of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, that took flesh and became a man? Why couldn't be a Father, who now takes, you know, the flesh? Or why the Holy Spirit? Why is it the the, the Word of God that we believe that the second person of the Trinity who became uh, uh, a man? Uh, the Word of God. Uh, Christ is the prototype of the creation of man. He's the perfect man, right? So it's like our goal is to become like him. Um, uh, so the word of God is the prototype of the creation of man. Um, uh, St. Paul writes, the son and word of God, uh, the son and word of God is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Man was created in the image of God, that is to say, the image of the word. St. John of Damascus writes that man was formed in the image and likeness of the word, which means man was made as perfect in the virtues as is possible to his nature. But because of the fall, man reduced the image and likeness and death became, and death became its consequence. Therefore, the word was incarnated to bring man to his initial nature. Um, Okay, um, uh, so death had to be conquered, right? So, so, therefore, the word of God by his incarnation assumed the mortal body in order to conquer death and became and become the prototype of the new creation. So, we were all created in the image of God, in what in the image of His Word, His Son, to share what we to be with Him, to share what He has. So, with the fall, He had to go back and renew it. He had to go back and fix it. Um, the second reason why the second person of the Trinity uh, was incarnated, um, it's because of his specific character as the Son would not change. What does that mean? The second reason, um, uh, each person of the Holy Trinity has a specific character which does, does not change. The Father is the Father and not the Son. 
the Son is not the Holy Spirit. They cannot swap characters around. And this was actually one heresy in the early church that a lot of people started, or some people believed that it was, oh yeah, just uh, God the Father kind of became a, became a child. Like he changed his status from a father to become a son, to become a baby. We don't believe in this, of course. Um, uh, they cannot swap around, characters around. We confess in the creed that the second person of the Trinity, the word of God, is begotten of the Father before all ages. God the word is the son of the Father. Therefore, the son of God become uh, became the what? The son of man. That's the title for the Messiah. That he, Ibn al-Insan, right? That's another title for Christ. Um, uh, therefore, the Son of God became the Son of Man from in order for his unique character to remain unchanged, that he would always stay as a son. Third reason is the word, uh, why the Word of God... Uh, 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 the third reason is that the Word of God reports to us his creation, the will of God, Okay, uh, the God the Father. He is the bridge who connects us with our Creator. God the Father cannot be seen. It was He, the Word, who was revealed in the Old Testament and made manifest the will of God um, uh, the Father. So it was evident that the Word was incarnated so we can approach God the Father through Him. He is the door which we enter the house of the Father. So, um, um, this why like at least the second person of the trinity and lastly what this all means for us today what is this feast right for for us um you, if you remember last year i spoke about a word in greek it's called the kenosis uh word of kenosis k-e-n-o-i-s um k-e-n-o-s-i-s -S. uh literally means it's a greek word that means self-emptying people might think especially in the medical crews like oh does that mean they had uh forgive me uh they puked and they uh they threw up and they had diarrhea they emptied themselves i literally had people asking this and you know, every time you'll see this word going online like going around on facebook or something people say oh what does that term mean why are we using it and what does it mean and but it's just a greek word that meant it literally means self-emptying and we'll talk about what kind of self-emptying um uh what is it for us right now, 2,000 years? Uh, 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 kenosis, self-emptying. This is a term frequently used when speaking about the incarnation of the word of God, which literally means, a Greek word that means self-emptying. Uh, uh, self-emptying. In, in Arabic, literally, we use the word akhla adhat. Akhla datahu. Shu akhla? In Arabic? What do you, do you know? Akhla? Void. void, void, or like let it, you know, akhla that left it empty. Taraka, taraka, left, tarak. akhla, right? And especially we say, you know, akhla baitahu, like he just emptied his house. Okay, yeah. in Arabic we say kinosis, um, self emptying, akhla akhla thatahu. How is in the how is the incarnation a self emptying? How does it apply? Um, in Christ's nativity, right? First, the kenosis, the self-emptying of the word of God, that term must be understood as, as condescension. Um, condescension. Uh, uh, condescension. Shub al-Arabi, condescension. What do you think? When somebody turns the nose up, that's condescending. Uh, uh, hey, but but uh, here, um, pleasing but not meaning to. It's, that's condescending. Like a hubut mustawa, right? Like looking down. It's, at least that's how we understand it now. Yeah. Condescending. He he cond he feels condescended, right? Or, um, but it's actually if you look at the, uh, it, it like the uh, actual translation, of or 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 definition of condescension. Uh, it does not mean it doesn't have this uh, um, um, like this um, degrading character, right? It, 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 nowadays, it might apply uh, like arrogance or looking down on someone, but this is not the original meaning. The original meaning of condescension, even if you put it now in the 
uh, dictionary, Merriam-Webster, Webster, or any of, it basically says voluntary descent from one's rank or dignity and relations with an inferior. It's actually good. It's like really going down to the level of work. Like if you're on a higher rank, really uh, like, I don't know, uh, a, a general in the army walks in to a bunch of uh, soldiers sitting on the floor eating, you know, some like whatever food that it's cheap or whatever. But basically this general sitting down with them and eating them. He kind of that wall that yeah, it's also in the way here that he is humbling himself big time, and it's that's why it leads the con this kind of condescension was basically like an utter humiliation, like the extreme humiliate uh, humility, not a humiliation. I'm sorry, Ex extreme humility, right? So it's like although his rank, this general is like ranked, you know, he probably can have his own banquet and all of this, but like no, he wanted to be with his people with his soldiers and sat down. Um, I am going on Sunday because I thought more and more about it. Uh, God willing, Sunday night, my, my short sermon, I promise, hopefully it will be short, that it's, um, I want to talk about the, the show Undercover Boss. Have you seen that show, Undercover Boss? Anybody knows about it? About it? Um, I've heard of it. It's a good yeah. show, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's a good one, yeah. Yeah, so undercover boss. I don't know if it's still you know they they do new episodes, but it's um a they, they there's a CEO of a company it can be every time every episode is a different CEO, like the CEO of uh, I don't know Staples, the CEO of uh, Wendy's, you know all kinds of stores, all kinds of businesses. Um, uh, we CEO of uh, Sally's. It's like some women you know makeup stuff. Beauty store, yeah. Beauty, beauty store and usually the ceo disguise himself or herself as just another employee in their own company and they go there and they work you know and they they get to meet people and usually the show is uh, shows uh, it's done like where they choose three usually two or three or four people uh for their for this disguised ceo to interact with and get to know and all of this. And it happens usually they play it to find really struggling employees. Somebody who's, I don't know, orphan or somebody who's uh, very poor or very sick or really works very hard to build the future or to raise his children or to take care of them because of some medical. And then it's it's very touchy, right? Everybody loves the end where Usually he meets with them. He reveals himself or herself and says, well, I was not, you know, Nancy. I was actually, you know, you know, Jeanette, whatever, the CEO of whatever that company. And because I've seen how you've done and what you're going through, I'm going to, I don't know, pay for your uh, college education or I'm going to buy you a house or I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Right. It's like, oh, such a touchy thing. Well, imagine this times trillion times what christ has done for us it's basically christ coming down giving up his ceo status if i can say and becoming one of us and helping us and eating with us and being with us the only big difference also that he's just not picked two or three uh you know people to kind of help but he's actually he came to all of us to all those employees even to some of the episodes that we see uh, on uh, uh, undercover boss, that some employees like really are bad. They would every once in a while they show like a very bad employee who just like doesn't care, who just wants to get paid or like cause trouble. But the interesting thing is, in Christ in Christianity, even Christ came to that person, even that person who's troublemaker or is not doing a job, but Christ still came for him or her. Um, so. So that's like the the, the idea of like uh, uh, taking uh, uh, emptying himself, um, utter humility, extreme humility of of Jesus Christ. So Saint John Chrysostom, uh, Saint John Chrysostom, oh sorry, Saint John of Damascus writes, the word of God, Christ, comes down to the level of his servants, an ineffable and incomprehensible condescension, incomprehensible, so it cannot be explained. The word of God comes down to the level of a human race taken on the form of a servant. There's a picture I really love. I was like, last year, I was like, I need to find it. I need to find it. So 
Where is Christ in this? Is this Christ? No. Where is Christ? Is Christ is part of the line at the bottom? Right here. The leader. Right. right. And that's real leadership. Leadership is not like I sit here, you know, I, I, I do this and, you know, all of this. You know, leadership is what? Like this. I can send you guys the picture if you want the picture. I can send it to you. It's beautiful. Like when I first saw it a couple of years ago, so I was like, that is such a good reminder. And like, and then so on my talk, I was like, well, you know what? That's that's what leadership is. Where you I have seen it in leadership training. So that's why I was like, I need to look for it and find it, you know. It's it's it's, it's a very important one, right? Um Saint Gregory, the th another saint in our church, uh, he says, He that is full. But Christ empties himself, for he empties himself of his glory for a short while, that I, or we, may have a share in his fullness. Um, uh, one of our saints, his name is Saint Athanasius, he has a very famous saying that he says, uh, God became man, okay, Allah sara insana, so man can become God, okay? God became man, so man can become God. Allah sara insanan, but insan yusbah ilah. Okay, uh, in the chat, I'll explain. Uh, oh yeah, I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Zabia. I just uh, saw your uh, your uh, your comment uh, in the chat. Yes, Yaumiyat Mudiram. I love it. I used to watch it. Uh, it's like such a funny guy. He become like one day. Usually he's the. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a it's, he's the. Uh, I don't know if well he's not the 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 the, the minister right. He's not the wazir. No, he's um, the mudir. He's the like, like, the, the, CEO, like the basically. Yeah, yeah, and he does like he's like the usually he makes himself the 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 coffee guy like the guy who makes coffee and bring it you know around to the employees and then he like he's just to discover the corrupted uh, person exactly and he fix and he fix all it's, I love it I mean what's his name he's great I mean he's a great comedian uh, <clears> yeah <throat> yeah yeah I mean you can find it on YouTube Yomi Yet Mudiram or Undercover Boss it's like kind of like but it's Yomi Yet Mudiram like you know. Um, uh, like the uh, how would you translate that? Um, like the daily, daily. 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 <clears throat> yeah, like the dailies, like basically, <clears throat> what, you know, what he does about life, yeah, what it does, it's daily action of the of general manager, yeah, yeah, it's like, um, it's, it's a beautiful show. I mean, <laughs> I've watched many episodes, sometimes they act like employees, sometimes, like the yeah, yeah, every time he'll come up with something. One of the best, and I'm sorry, like I love. Thank you, Zafra, for bringing it. Is that the show with the funny wife? He has a funny wife. Yeah, well, that's it's, the one, right? Yeah. I think it's like well, she never gets jealous too, like or yeah. like she has a wife. Like the, the, the <laughs> he's done multiple. Very shows. very simple minded, and she's uh, yeah. Funny. But uh, there is one like he's offering coffee, and then there's a guy came for like some whatever. Whatever he needed a uh, transaction, he just needed the, the the signature or the stamp or whatever from the from the employee. But the employee was like so lazy. He was like, "Come back later, or we're closed or whatever." And like the guy, like, "Please, please, just please, you know, do this. It's the weekend, and I don't know what. You know, I, it was a hard time for me to come. All of these things." And the employee is like, "No, I don't care." And the and the CEO, like, he's just there. He's like, "Huh? Oh, you'll see." Like with a with a very nice heavy Syrian accent, like I'll, I'll show you the the CEO, like the mudir, the director is gonna call you in two minutes. He goes in, calls. Uh, 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 you know, it's just a funny show, but it tells you also like somebody who came to help people, really to to bring order and to bring peace and to bring you know prosperity and like make things you know everybody's you know doing their their job. Um, it's a beautiful show. Um, so. Man becoming God is an opportunity for us, his creature, uh, to reunite with him, to bring back the state of humanity to what it was before the fall and how God intended it for us. We do not become gods in a polytheistic way. It's not like gods like, yeah, God of uh, DC and the God of, uh, 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 you know, Vienna and the God of Chantilly or God, of, like not like this. 
But the point is, uh, we, it's not like we become multiple gods, but what it means is that we become sharer of his communicable attributes, goodness, holiness, and love. We become in constant state of goodness, holiness, and love. These same attributes to our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So what is it for us 2,000 years later that we make Christ born in us, in our heart, which means we work more, you know, harder to become better, to become more holy, more loving, more caring, more forgiving. That's what it means at the end of the, like, be like him. He emptied himself. In what way? He gave up on his ego. He gave up on his um, authority to become one of us. And that's what we're called to do. We're called that. We're called to be, uh, 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 to, to like love like he loved, like it's a sacrifice and all of this, right? Um, uh, with humility, be humble, ask for forgiveness. And that's what we, that's in the end of the day, the real meaning of nativity of, of the birth of Christ. At the end of the day, it's not about the tree. It's not about the gift. It's not about, uh, I don't know, the pajamas. I spoke about the pajamas. Like uh, it's like every year you'll see a few pictures, which is fine, nice. But it's like, why didn't you, literally somebody a few years ago before I became a priest, like, why didn't it come to service? It was in the morning, or it was at night. They're like, well, Father, you know, we do this thing where we all get the same, you know, every year the same uh, uh, small, uh, pajamas and we take pictures and damn and all this. Like, like, I mean, yes, fine, nice, beautiful, and that, but like, really, you couldn't come to church the 15 minutes that you probably had to drive, not more than 15 where they lived. And what, what the church that way, like really just in like miss this two hours of beautiful service to really so so you can take a picture. What what are you gonna tell Christ when you go to? I mean, in the second coming, look look what I have this beautiful Christmas, uh, you know, uh, pajamas. How is that gonna help you? Like do it fine, do it the next day, do it before, do it after. I don't know, but like that's not it's gonna replace church. What are you gonna do? God bless uh, you know. God bless the people. What do you? No, not too. Okay, um, uh, every time we celebrate the nativity of Christ, we do not just celebrate the memory of a historical event that took place 2,000 years ago, right? As Orthodox, we believe that we relive Christ's nativity as if it's happening now, not just a long time ago. So how do we relive it? We relive it that God became one of us. He really showed us love, even with all our mistakes. He still loved us. He wanted to guide us. He came to uh, uh, forgive us and offer us forgiveness and serve us. And that's what ultimately, if we call ourselves Christians, that's what we're supposed to do. Yes, we take care of ourselves. No one is saying not. But always keep in mind that there's the other. How can I be a better person by serving the other, by forgiving, by asking for forgiveness? You know, always see me by sacrificing, by loving, caring, and all of this. That's what it means to us. Um, I can just uh, um, one thing and then we can if you want take questions uh, or comments or complaints or whatever you want to do um, there's a saint Saint Athanasius Adis Athanasius the one who says man uh, God became man so man become, became God he looks at the uh, nativity scene uh, the nativity icon as a type of church uh, let me let me uh, uh, Go back here. Can I move this like this? Yeah, and then go here. So it's a the way they depict uh, Saint Athanasius is just like it's a symbol, but it's it's a it's a nice symbolic thing. Um, he Saint Athanasius talk about the nativity scene as a type of church. I it milad. What does it mean? The cave. The cave represents the church building, the nave and the altar, and the narthex nave and altar. Okay, that's the cave. We're all in there, right? Um, Jesus, uh, the manger. Um, uh, the manger is the altar table. Jesus is the bishop. No, because the bishop represents Christ. The Virgin Mary is the throne. Where Jesus came from, like came from, the throne. Which what do you see in the back of the altar at Saint George? Now we added it last year, or two years ago. What do you see? There's always an icon of the Virgin Mary with hands open, right? And that where there 
there in and we have a chair now in the altar for this but that was the old place for the bishop that was the throne where the bishop stays nowadays the bishop usually stays outside and then he goes inside we have the big uh the big throne outside but in the older days um before the 15th century before uh, uh, 1453 the fall of constantinople the bishop always sat in the back in that chair under the icon of the virgin mary opening her heads so the Virgin Mary represent, represents the throne uh, um, uh, in the church. The Magi, the Magi represents the priests. They're the ones who offered, they're doing the offerings. And uh, Joseph is the altar servers, the altar server. He's the guy who facilitated the work of, you know, the birth, right? He's the one who kind of uh, protected the Virgin Mary from any kind of scandal. He's the one who, you know, you know, took them to find the cave. And then after, he's the one who led them to, to flee to, to Egypt. So he's like the altar boy. He's the guy who, who helps get things done, right? Uh, and the shepherds are the deacons proclaiming, right? Proclaiming, you know, the, the birth uh, of Christ. And the deacons are the ones who do the petitions and all of this. And then the angels are the choir singing. That's one symbolic depiction of what the, um, uh, um, um, you know, what, what's in Athanasius talk about it. And then who is Herod? What do you think Herod is? Kind of like symbolically represent? The devil. The devil. Uh-huh. Which means what is the devil like for us now? What does it mean? Like our mistakes, our right? Or like other mistakes that we make, our you know bad behaviors and stuff. So, what do we need to do? Uh, Saint Athanasius continues to say that we should deceive Herod. So we deceive, uh, we, we deceive uh, our our sins. So we work on sins and we avoid them and we avoid our you know the bad thoughts and all of this. Like the Magi did. What did the Magi do after they met Christ? They never went. They never went back. Never went back. They went after they, they promised they will. Yes, but they knew at the end of the day they will die, and they don't want to tell where Christ is. Okay, so they deceived him in a good way, right? They deceived him in a in a good way. Uh, so Herod represents for us the devil, our struggles, the struggles we might have, the addictions we might have, the passions that we might have. That we that's what we need to uh, uh, avoid, right? We must abandon the road. Uh, of destruction and follow the road of life through living a sacramental, righteous, and virtuous life, right? So they went on the right way. Imagine like now the Magi has been illumined. They saw the king. Most likely, you know, they went and talked about it and all of this. So we are called to pray, fast, go to confession, purify our hearts, and to self-empty, to empty utter humility, so we can become servants of the less to the less fortunate, the poor, the orphan, the widow, and the needy. Then and only then we can be illuminated and dare to call ourselves Christians and really celebrate the feast of nativity, uh, the, the, the nativity of Christ. Let us be watchful like the shepherds and the magi. Let us live the nativity and not just celebrate it. Let us live it. That doesn't mean like in a, again, I will say a flip of a button. Well, um, you know, yes, I, I, you know, I'm struggling with this. Yeah, well, I shouldn't the next day. Nothing, no. But we start attempting. We do the attempts to, to, um, you know, to purify ourselves, to face our struggles, to work on them, and all of this. So that's basically, and sorry, but like, that's a in some, I, you know, um, um, it's like a, a information or like an overview about the uh, nativity of Christ. And the icons and what it means for us and all of this. So I, I mean, I spoke about multiple things, but I'm open. Any questions? Any comments? Any complaints? Or anything you want to add or ask about? That's an interesting. I'll go second. Yes, Josh. Okay, Father, thank you, thank you for this beautiful explanation. Um, I'm trying well. to, I'm trying to, and maybe this is a mystery. So please help me understand this a little bit better. Mm, I hope you. Um, but you mentioned that um, when Adam and Eve heard the footsteps in, in mm. Eden Garden, that was Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity. Yes. Um, 
when Moses saw the back of God, that was the second person of the Trinity. Every time, basically, every time, when when God appeared to uh, so to Prophet Elias, at least that's what the Church teaches. It's not like just a, it's that's what the Church teaches that every time any action took place in the Old Testament or you know any of the prophets or the people heard like the guy who was the voice that was talking to um uh, 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 um what's his name uh, um Jonah you know go and tell the people in in uh, Nineveh you know to uh, to to give up on all the mistakes like we believe that it was God the Son the second person of the Trinity who was speaking who was revealing these things is there is there an instance and I I'm only aware of two instances where the the Trinity is made manifest. One one is in the hospitality of Abraham, mm -hmm. and the other one is in the actual theophany, right? When Christ was yes. baptized, and transfiguration too, and transfiguration too. Yes, but even in the in the uh, uh, in, in nativity in the nativity of Christ, the Trinity was revealed, right? In what way? Um. Uh, God the Father says, "This is, uh, you know, he he was, well, here, the, the Son is the Son, right? The second person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Uh, how was the the involvement of the Holy Spirit in the in the proclamation of the good news to the Virgin Mary? Yes, right. And it says the 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 uh, the, the angel says you'll be uh, pregnant by the Holy, you know, by the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit will come, you know." It will like the, the, through the Holy Spirit you'll be, you'll have the you know you'll be uh, incarnate you know you'll 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 be pregnant. I do want to say well, there's one place I know that I don't know I, I, because I think I skipped it telling you no telling you but it is there's a place um I wrote it before uh how they are they all uh, Christ himself being abused. God the Father, because you know, in the end, He allowed it. He allowed this. He wanted to for us to do this. Yeah, I can't find it now. Of course, now because there's symbolism in the nativity icon of this, or so. So no, because in the icon, um, uh, uh, in the icon, well, let me just share it again. Okay, um, it's clear. You see the Father, yeah, well, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the, the Holy Spirit. I mean. We can't see it, but it's like we believe like the Holy Spirit was involved by he's the one who helped the, the virgin. Got, she got pregnant through the Holy Spirit. How in all of this, as we say, it's all mystical. I do want to see if I can find that place. Revelation. Hmm. Robert did not see it. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, of course not because I want it. How about the baptism? Well, yes, baptism and transfiguration for for sure. But there is uh, baptism, like like George says, at the hospitality of Abraham, the three angels, the uh, at the baptism of Christ and his transfiguration. Uh, okay, God the Word became flesh. God the Father willed it, and He was pleased. And he was well pleased. God the Father allowed this to happen. Jesus Christ was conceived uh, by the Holy Spirit. So back to the question. Da, 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 da. So all three were basically involved. And like in everything, they're always all three are involved. Not one of them works on his own or by his own. It's like a perfect unity between the three of them. Uh, that every time there's an event, all three somehow they're involved in it. Because they can it cannot be just one of them without the other two, or two without one. Right. Okay. Thank you, Father. Okay. But God the Father in nativity, he allowed that to happen. So if it was <laughs> for him to if he did not will it, that won't happen. Christ, the second person of the Trinity, well, it was Christ and the Holy Spirit, because the the, the pregnancy happened through the Holy Spirit. Any other questions? I have one, just one comment. 
all my life, there's a couple of words in the Bible never understood. One of them was tuba, and I mentioned that before. Never knew what it meant till about, I don't know, a few years back. Another one is the Magi. We look up Magi in Arabic, it says Majus, and you stop. Tonight I looked it up. It says people who worship the sun and the moon. So they're always looking up in the sky. Mm -hmm. It says, mm -hmm. and then, and then, So I'm not sure who wrote this. Maybe some Muslim translating and stuff. But this is not a Muslim? Seems like somebody. Oh, not, I'm just thinking maybe a Muslim is translating. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it says, "Umma kana ta'budu an-nar wa ash-shams wal qamar." So they're always, they're always, their heads always in the sky. Yeah, they're always looking at to, to figure out the reason how this world came, who is in charge, all of this, by looking at this, and that's why it's a sign of Gentiles, and yet it's the world. At least they represent the Gentiles. They represent the people, um, uh, basically, that the Jews never thought like they would be included. Because they always thought, well, even till today, they, you know, they consider themselves the chosen people. But uh, Tuba, Tuba, right I don't now know. we know what it means because it's blessed in English. But yeah, I never, we never used Tuba in Arabic. I know Tayyib means good, but Tuba, I never knew what it meant. Yeah, we, but always, we always use Tuba in Arabic. Only in the Bible. Allah in the Arabic. scriptures. Yeah, 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 only in the Bible. I never like use, we don't it. use it on like you don't hear it on the street yeah. anywhere, not even in yeah. books. Yeah, yeah, of course, because I'm pretty sure. Mm, give me one second, please. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's it's my fault not asking further because I didn't take religion when I was a child. If the teacher that gave us for well, maybe one year about religion sat us like a history book. He was Christian, that was a plus, but he never went through it other than a story. I see. So you, he never polished or shined our brains to ask questions. Whatever yeah. rust was it, there stayed there. Yeah, yeah, and we took a lot of things for granted. Honestly, a lot of stuff like, oh, you know, why this way? and then be like, oh, let me check. Like, why would we believe in this? Why would we? Although in the Quran, even I guess it's mentioned. Oh no, no! What I'm saying, this this translation here, it's a an Arabic yeah, so, uh, uh, um, no, no, even, even I'm, yeah, my mind is in Tuba. Uh, I mean, even Muslims like wrote about it, like Ya Rasulullah Ma Tuba. Well, but uh, um, it says. It's it's basically pointing to heaven. So two whoever, you know, they make peace. Well, of course, this is the result. Like they're gonna go, you know, they will be saved. Yeah, it says what it means in the scriptures, yeah, Like that's a you know, what a joy, you know, ghipta and joy, like how joyful. For those who, ta, 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 you know, how joyful is this? How joyful, how joyful. That's uh, basically one, one, um, yeah. Um, I, I believe, I believe it's different meaning than in, in Christianity than Muslims or in the Quran. Yes, it says in, in the Quran, they use that word, but it's, it's a, 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 a meaning basically your, your, uh, um, like looking into into heaven, this is your way to heaven. It's uh, 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 Tuba and Christianity. I know it's a blessing. Bless this. Blessed. Tuba lil Hazana. Sure. Bless you. God bless you. Good. Yeah. Like it's it's but still in, a good thing in Muslims people. with Muslims people. It's I believe they they had it as a tree in heaven. Oh, they say that they do say, they 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 do say this and like somehow. There's a hundred years something involved, like it's a tree in heaven that they that basically feed from in all of this. Yeah. Tuba, yes. Although this is another one says, also Tuba can mean the ones who believed and did the good good deeds. That's one also another. Um, as they also say, 
it is the name of a tree. Uh, um, you know, it's a, the name of the tree, like you said. Uh, it is a tree in 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 heaven. Um, oh, it's it's all kinds of colors. And all kinds of stuff, in it, uh, all kinds of colors, this tree, except black. And it does not have any fruits in it, whatever they, that's a, at least that's what the, the word Tuba in the, in the Muslim mind. But like you said, uh, Zabi, it's different than, than what we believe. A completely different meaning in uh, in. Uh, Sorry, I'm Musami, can you say why that came up today? I know it's just some of the few words that you just read in the Bible. You don't exactly know what they mean. You just skip over because you don't you don't think to ask. And then until I, you know, the um, what do you call the uh, blessed are those? What do you call those? Uh, yeah, the, the, the attitudes. Yeah, the attitudes. So you, know, you have to you look up beatitudes easier than looking up tuba. Thank you. Yeah. It's a yeah, it's a Greek word that. Um, uh, but basically mean like how joyful, how good. Yeah, you know, I, I'll finish with this. Oh, Zavi, yes. But there is, we always say in Christianity, Tubawi. Tubawi, I think they were kind of people who who talk about uh, Christianity and who, yeah, just like... Uh, mm, I see what you mean. We It's used more in the Catholic Church than us. Yeah, and seen it's a rank before full sainthood. Uh, I don't know what exactly how they define it, but I know in the Catholic Church, they can say someone who's a tubewi, but he's not a full saint yet. It's like we're still studying his case, or like did not show yet enough evidence as of like a full saint or something. So they call them a tubawi, so and so, the blessed so and so. Uh, but I don't know if they because of their teaching or. But I, I know it's a it's a rank in the Maronite church they use it constantly. But in general, it means like somebody kind and and like humble and nice and talk about like he preach about uh, Jesus and uh, yeah, like yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I thought. Let I'm sorry, I changed the subject. Uh, Abuna, uh, <laughs> one last thing, Abuna, about. Uh, the nativity fast, it's yeah. a, there is a fasting period. Yes, sir. But always at the end, it gets a little bit uh, harder and harder. Yeah. In what way harder? Uh, I've heard it Less is... Uh, I'm sorry? Yes. So so, so it's, it, it doesn't get that much harder. So the practice in the Advent, in the in the 40 days prior to, to Christmas, is we fast. Uh, except that it says in some pra in some churches that you can eat fish. So you avoid beef, you avoid chicken, okay? You avoid milk, you avoid dairy, you avoid all of this, and anything associated with eggs and chicken and dairies. And, and the only thing that is you eat, uh, you can eat fish. Um, but it says once you hit December 20th, if I'm not mistaken, the 30th, yeah. the 30th to the 24th, from the 13th to the 24th, the 15th of November, the fast always starts 15th of November, which is 40 days before and ends at December 24th, of course, but the last week, I think the December 20th, where it becomes stricter in what way that you're not supposed to even eat the fish, you'll just full land like full like full practice uh, of, of fasting like as a flint um like prior to pascha so and you're not supposed to have wine nor oil no oil or wine yeah usually even in the like in like in our canon laws and the church laws that we're not supposed to have oil and uh, wine, but who cannot eat without oil? So the church, I mean, for many years now, it's like just be a vegan, basically. Thank you, Abuna. Thank you so much. But, but yeah, it gets kind of a stricter um, because you, you're not allowed to um, 
to 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 uh, to eat fish or like basically become full vegan by December twentieth, if I'm not mistaken. Or I mean, what's the reason? It's for what sake? I mean, who 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 uh, who? What is it? Why it is get so strict? So, so you, I mean, I don't know why they want like. They just did not include fish from the beginning and make it a fast like like any other fast like the the Easter fast you know, uh, but the point is you do fasting is really then to feel different on the day of the feast. If I eat every day, I don't know burger and all of like all the stuff and chocolate and all of this. When when the feast comes in, no, oh, I mean I, I just had the same food you know two days ago, three days ago, whatever it is. So there's no kind of like really taking a break where you really fasting in a way to fast at least from the food point of view to really when you get to that feast and you really feast then then you can you feel the difference you feel it's just not another day you know what i mean imagine if christmas is every day what do you th it's imagine like somehow you know there's actually a cartoon about a, a boy who wanted christmas every day and kept praying about it and then somehow this god whatever granted him this so it's like literally he goes to bed he goes if he, he wakes up it's christmas and somehow the whole world is celebrating christmas and then yes continue like and then he goes to bed and gets up the next day it's christmas and after a week what did he say it's a cartoon thing it's like an old cartoon uh he's like i'm bored I, was just, I don't care about christmas anymore because it's like every day every day it became it became a routine so the point is we prepare ourselves in a way that's part of why we we fast. That in a way, when the feast comes, we really feel the difference. And then, of thank course, you, we... thank you, Abuma. thank you. Sir. So, yalla, no more food. Hala, la Sunday night. So I was actually just looking at the calendar, but on the twentieth, it says we could have wine and oil. Is that because of the feast of Saint Ignatius? Maybe, but there are also differences between us and the Greeks. You know, some, you know, the Greeks do something practice something we practice different russians do different gotcha. the end of the, all, all of this fasting through history changed the rules i mean the rules change and stuff but in general in general they mean like to stay vegan got it oh uh, yeah some might do this greeks might do this greek might say only fish on the weekends not during the week i mean it's just I, at the end of the day it's not about the food right no it's stuff. not it's the food is just like a way of training yourself how to control your passions. If I cannot control what comes in in my mouth, how can I control what comes out out of my mouth? Exactly. You know I mean? It's like if I can have some kind of a power to say, you know what, I do not want to eat this one today. Somehow, like man up and so hopefully when I'm struggling with whatever struggle I might have, at least practice with the food so I can hopefully start working on the serious part. Where like my passions, my struggles, my addictions, whatever it is. So in a way, we work on this really on like purifying ourselves, fasting from our bad thoughts and stuff. So when the feast comes, like we have a clear conscience, you know, on our mind to receive Christ, to be like him, to be with him, you know. Oh, good night, Elias and my son. Good night. God willing, but yes, yes. Thank you. So that's why we fast, you know, because in the end, again, what does it mean? I go, oh yeah and that's why people who like you know party and all of this it's just like okay find time to pray find time you know some you know what else what's what's the point of partying every day or every other day you know i don't know abuna walid is not here so uh, it's uh, walid dumped, dumped us for tw twice two or three weeks now I, he has to like i don't know we have to be taking pictures with pajamas Yes, I'm sure Walid would be very proud of you that you're, you're, yes, and probably yes, with his family trying the new pajamas or something. I don't know. What's it mean? But I don't know. Well, enjoy it. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll have the, what's called the royal service, the royal hours, and um, uh, the royal hour service at 11, and then Saturday, Vespers, and on Sunday, we're doing the two services the regular service on Sunday, God willing. And the Christmas service at night at seven, starting at seven p.m. Yeah, the, your presence you will honor us and bless us with your <laughs> <presence>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Sunday morning's mass is not Christmas mass. Yeah. Divine liturgy. It's not Christmas. So we're doing the regular Sunday in the morning. As I give a whole shmeal thing, whatever on Sunday, and no, ah, lo zala. To Yahweh, you come to one, you come to one of them, not both. Well, you come to both, ah, lo zala. You still loved and welcomed everything, but I can. We are going to offer two services. Is Allah, God, Allah, we go now. Then Allah, Karim, yatiq lafi, yatiq. Oh, yatiq. Thank you, Allah. You're very welcome. Very, very, very welcome. I know some of you are traveling. It was very useful information today. Oh, oh my God! I know some of you are traveling. Be safe. I don't know. Well, fading. The screen is fading. I don't hear anything. Oh my God! How about you? Sure. You need to. Is this I'm sorry. Your... The screen is completely fading, and it's not responding. Zoom yeah. is not responding. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear us at least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do anything. I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Now, Barki, this is. Is this the new computer that you bought? <laughs> no, I didn't buy any yet. I think it's his way of saying Merry Christmas and good night. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the timer's kicking on. Yeah, yeah. Did well, you want to close us in prayer, Father? Yes, travel safe, but travel safe, be safe. When you travel, you will be missed. And, you know, God willing, we'll see whoever can come. And anyway, a blessed nativity. And a blessed feast to all of you and your families. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessing you bestow upon us. We are looking forward to celebrate your nativity, your birth, your condescension, your humility, and your love for us. Plant in us your spirit, your love, and your sacrifice, and your humility, so we can continue your work and we serve others as you served us. For thou art holy now and ever not ages of ages. Amen. Thank you very much, Abuna. Thank you.